Narsimha Vamana Srimadu Sudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Narsimha Vamana Srimadu Sudana Rajendra Nanda Nashama Putana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Tana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Gopi Priyajana Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priyajana Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Jana Vashtrahari Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Jana Vashtrahari Raja Prajera Rakala Gopa Vrinda Palo Chitta Hari Vamsi Dhari Yogindra Bandhana Srinanda Nandhana Prajajana Bayahari Yogindra Bandhana Srinanda Nandhana Prajajana Bayahari Vinanira Dha Rupa Manohara 
मोहन बम नीन नीर दूप मनोहरा मोहन बम यशोद नंदन खमसोधन निकुंज रासोद नंदन खमस निशोधन निकुंज रासि कादंब कानन रास परायण वृंद विपीन निवासी दाम्ब कानन रास परायन वृंद विपीन निवासी आनंद वर्धन प्रेम निकेतन शर आनंद वर्धन प्रेम निकेतना फुलशर यो जखना गोपांगनादन चित विनोधन समस्त गुण घन जा गोपांगनागन चित विनोधन समस्त गुण जन जामुन जीवन के लिए पारायण मानस चंद्र चकोरा यामुन जीवन के लिए पारायण मानस चंद्र चखोरा नमस को कृष्णयाश राको वचन मन मोहरा शुरस को कृष्णयाश राको वचन मन मोहरा
जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बाला गिरी पर गोपी जान बाला गिरी पर यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तेरा वनचारी यमुन थेरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया नारायणम नमस्कृत नर चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधेराय नष्टु भद्रेश भागवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके वक्तिर्भवतीस्तकीडिंग श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो फोर चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी वन इन नाराद मुनि इंस्ट्रक्स प्रचेत टेक्स नंबर नाइनटीन दया दयासर्वूतेषु दयासर्वूतेषु सन्तुष्टियान के वन के वेन्द्रिया पाशं सर्वेन्द्रियो पशंचनादनादना Sorry, there's some confusion. 
Mataji wrote down <coughs> number 18, but 18 was yesterday. We did 18 uh, yesterday. Oh. Did we? Didn't we? Yeah? Also it was written 70, so I thought it was 18 now. Um. Well, I looked, I remembered the verses. Sorry, Maharaj. Okay. <coughs> anyway, we are on the phone, so it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we can read. Have you got the book? Yeah. Hmm? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Dayaya sarva bhuteshu Dayaya sarva bhuteshu Santustya yena kenava Santustya yena kenava Sarvendriya yopashantya cha Sarvendriya yopashantya cha Tushantya shujanardana Dayaya sarva bhuteshu Dayaya sarva bhuteshu Santustya yena kenava Sarvendriya yopashantya cha Tushyantya shujanardana Santustya yena kenava Sarvendriyo pashantya cha Tushyatya Dayaya, Dayaya by showing mercy, mercy. Bhuteshu to all living entities, entities. Santustya by being satisfied, satisfied. Yena Kenava somehow or other. Somehow or other. Sarva Indriya, all the senses, Upasantya, by controlling, Cha, also, Tushyati, become satisfied, Ashu, very soon, Janardana, the Lord of all living entities. The Lord of all living entities. Translation. By showing mercy to all living entities, being satisfied somehow or other, and rest restricting the senses from sense enjoyment, one can very quickly satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Janardana. You can repeat. By showing mercy, By showing mercy to, all living entities, to all living entities, being satisfied, being satisfied somehow, or other, somehow or other, and restricting the senses, restricting the senses from sense enjoyment, from sense enjoyment one, can very quickly one can very quickly 
satisfy the supreme personality of Godhead. Satisfy the supreme personality of Godhead. Janardana. Janardana. Purport. These are some of the ways in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be satisfied by the devotees. The first item mentioned is Daiya Sarva Bhuteshu, showing mercy to all conditioned souls. The best way to show mercy is to spread Krishna consciousness. The entire world is suffering for want of this knowledge. People should know that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the original cause of everything. Knowing this, everyone should directly engage in his devotional service. Those who are actually learned, advanced in spiritual knowledge under, or understanding should preach Krishna consciousness all over the world so that people may take to it and make their lives successful. The word Sarva Bhute Shu is significant because it applies not only to human beings but to all the living entities appearing in the 8,400,000 species of life. The devotee can do the devotee can do good not only to humanity but to all living entities as well. Everyone can, everyone can benefit spiritually by the chanting of lost my Everyone can benefit, let's see. <coughs> Everyone can benefit spiritually by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra when the transcendental vibration of Hare Krishna is sounded, even the trees, animals and insects benefit. Thus, when one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra loudly, he actually shows mercy to all living entities to spread the Krishna Consciousness Movement throughout the world, the devotees should be satisfied in all conditions. Narayana parasarve nakutasya vibhyate swarga apavarga narakesh papitu yatadarshana It does not matter to the pure devotee if he has to go to hell to preach. The Supreme Lord lives in the hearts 
of a hawk, although the Lord is in Vaikuntha. Even while preaching in hell, a pure devotee remains a pure devotee by his constant association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. To attain this state, one has to control his senses. The senses are automatically controlled when one's mind is engaged in the service of the Lord. Oma jnana timarandasya ganajana salakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha vancha kaupatarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhaye vacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Narada Muni is in giving advice to the Prachetas telling them how they can get free from material attachment and how they can satisfy the Supreme Lord. And he describes here today different qualities which they should exhibit. He said, first of all, showing mercy to all living entities. And then second quality was being satisfied somehow or other. And then thirdly, restricting the senses from sense enjoyment. So these three qualities are mentioned by Narada Muni, that he said you can very quickly satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Janardhan. So satisfying the Supreme Lord, that is, of course, very big, very big advantage to the living entity. If you can do some service which pleases, which satisfies the Lord, then it's very beneficial in our life. And certainly you'll be sure of a good situation and you'll be sure of uh, a, an a, an auspicious life. You'll be able to live peacefully and happily in the material exist, even if we're in the material existence. Even we may be in hell, we can be peaceful. We know there are some devotees who live in hell like Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, after Vamana, the Lord Vamanadev came and because Bali Maharaj had conquered the heavenly planets, he conquered all the demigods, and he was living the ki as the king of heaven. And then Lord Vamanadev came, because Mother Aditi, she wanted to get her children back, because the demigods had been driven out of heaven. And Mother Aditi was missing all of her children, who were the demigods. So she appealed to her husband and husband gave her a child who was an incarnation of the personality of Godhead, Lord Vamanadev. Lord Vamanadev appeared in the womb of Aditi. And so Lord Vamanadev came to Bali Maharaj. Lord Vamanadev of course is a dwarf and he comes in as a dwarf Brahmana to Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj had been told by Sukracharya, give charity to the Brahmins. That is very good to give charity to the Brahmins. People get a lot of benefit because the Brahmins are spiritual personalities. The Brahmins are supposed to be a symbol of the mode of goodness and you give money to the brahmana, the brahmana will use that money for the service of the Supreme Lord. He will not waste it in sinful activities. So 
and many great kings would give charity to the Brahmins. It was culture. Even Jana, even um, Jarasandha, in the times of Lord Krishna, Jarasandha was giving charity to the Brahmins, and that was why Bhima and Arjuna and Krishna went to see Jarasandha dressed as Brahmanas. They disguised themselves as Brahmanas and said, we want to get charity from you. Of course, the, the charity they wanted was to fight with Jarasandha. But they came as Brahmanas, disguised, to get charity. And Va Vamana Dev also, he's, of course, he, he, he assumed that he's a form of a Brahmana, and he came requesting Bali Maharaj to give charity. So Bali Maharaj gave charity against the advice of Shukracharya. Shukracharya said, don't give him. But Bali Maharaj said, well, you told me before to give. Now you're saying don't give. Why contradiction? And so Bali Maharaj decided he should give. And he gave charity to Lord Vamanadev and Lord Vamanadev took away everything and then captured Bali Maharaj and said to Bali Maharaj that you promised me three steps, I've only taken two and you have nowhere left. And he said, well, you can take the third one on my head. So then he took the third step on his head and he put Bali Maharaj in Sutala Loka in the one of the planets in the lower region of the universe and said, you go there and stay there and I'm coming with you as your doorkeeper. No one will disturb you. And Bali Maharaj lives there in the lower regions of the universe. And the Lord is there also as his doorkeeper. So, can live even in the lower planets, you know. Some, some of the people, the residents in hellish planets are also devotees, great devotees, like Bali Maharaj. And th they live in these conditions, but as the Shastra say, you can be satisfied anywhere. Narayana Parasarve, Nakutaschanya Vibhyate, Swarga, Apavarga, Narakesh, Vapitu Yatadarta, Apitu Yatadarshana. This that one who is the pure devotee does not see any difference between Swarg, which is the heaven, and Apavarga means liberation, and Narak means hell. You see, everywhere the same. Just devotees, wherever they go. You go to Zurich, you go to Hong Kong, you go to Moscow, you go to Los Angeles. It's the same program every day. Mongo RT, wake up early in the morning, go to Mongo RT, sing the Guru Vastikam, worship Tosi Devi, chant Japa, worship Prabhupada, hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the same program, it's a standard program throughout the world for a devotee, wherever they go. Even they're living in hell. They're living in these, these, these terrible regions, but they have the same program, should live the same kind of life. One devotee was here yesterday, he was here in the afternoon doing kirtan. He told me he's living up in the mountains. And he said six, seven months of the year it's snow. And he lives there. But he's Krishna conscious, doing nice kirtan. And he's living there with, with his wife. And they go out for preaching, go out and do kirtan and that. The devotees can live in different conditions. You know? Some places, you, you, I, we were in the Middle East and it's so hot, so hot. The desert, so hot, there's no, you know, <laughs> very, very dusty and dry, the desert, and people are living there, and they're having the same program, they're Krishna conscious, they wake up early, they chant Hare Krishna, they worship Krishna, they go to work, you know, wherever you are, different conditions, people live. 
Prabhupada went to London. He said, this London, this is hell. <laughs> and every day cloudy, never see the sun, always wet, <laughs> cold. And he said, this is hell. But Prabhupada was Krishna conscious. He can be Krishna conscious everywhere. So for the devotee, doesn't matter where we go. We, we take Krishna with us. We keep, keep up our spiritual practice wherever we go. We make a vow when we take initiation, when we accept initiation, we make a promise to the spiritual teacher to strictly follow the four principles and to chant every day, 16 rounds. So we have to be chaste and faithful to, these, to the teacher and, and fulfill our, our vows, keep our vows. And that's very pleasing to Krishna. When Krishna sees that we are willing to accept so many difficulties on behalf of devotional service, then Krishna is very pleased. He appreciates that. You see, this, this devotee is very determined, very serious. He's not going to give up. Some people, they give up very easily. A little difficulty, oh, and they stop everything. But we have to be very determined to go on and, do, and, and be Krishna conscious. Uh, even even if nobody comes to temple, nobody. But even if we're alone, you're all alone. You have to be Krishna conscious. You go off and we go off on our own. We go to different places, just like Prabhupada went to America on his own. He he did everything himself. He was cooking, and he was, he celebrated Janmashtami. He was on the ship. And he celebrated Janmashtami, he cooked some prasadam, he distributed it to all the crew on the boat. So we go to different parts of the world, different places, and there may be no devotees there, but it doesn't mean that we change anything. We keep the same program. We have to do the same things. We wake up early in the morning, we chant Hare Krishna, worship Krishna, and cook for Krishna, read the books about Krishna. We don't change anything. We have to keep ourselves alive. And that spiritual practice is what keeps us alive. So we have to be very determined, very convinced about the importance of these spiritual activities. We cannot deviate. Krishna consciousness is uh, very serious commitment and we we want to be devotees we have to we have to show our devotion to Krishna just like the Pandavas they accepted so much difficulty they had to go into exile for how many years was it 14 years tw or 12 years huh? 12 years and then one year in exile one year in exile, incognito, where they had to disguise themselves. And Arjuna at that time became a eunuch, you know, <laughs> because he'd been cursed by some woman from the heavenly planets. So he took the form of a eunuch and he was teaching dance for one year. He was teaching dance, although he's a Kshatriya king. And so, sometimes we have to do these kind of things for, for Krishna's service. Sometimes, like I, I was in China, I got a job. I got a job as a teacher, teaching English, just, just to keep myself alive so that I could stay in China, so that I could have a, a legitimate reason for being there. So I got, took a job. Sometimes you have to do these things, you know just to try to to remain in that situation to distribute Krishna consciousness. Sometimes, you know, people think, you know, oh devotees, you never, you, you don't have a job, you never work, it's all right. For, but sometimes we do work, sometimes we do, we take jobs, we have to do these things. 
sometimes we have to make arrangements for supporting ourselves. We have to do different kinds of sankirtan. Just like in order for us to go into China, we would go and sell paintings. And we were doing painting sankirtan, you know. A big roll of paintings, Hong Kong paintings, you know. And distributing paintings. Jai Jagannath Pavade Supadra Gorni Thai Ki Jai. So sometimes we have to do these different things, you know, in order to uh, facilitate our service to Krishna. Just like the devotees in South Africa, they wanted to collect money to build their big temple in Durban. And they had no money, they were not getting much money in South Africa. And so they started to go to all different places around the world, distributing oil paintings, you know. And they collected the money selling paintings and they could build a nice temple, make a nice temple for Krishna. And Prabhupada also, when Prabhupada built the Juhu temple and the Vrindavan temple, you can see in Vrindavan there's a plaque there in the temple and it says, they thank two sannyasis, Guru Kripa Swami and Yashodananda and Swami. And their contribution was like 27 lakhs, which was a lot of money in 1970s. It's not much money now, but in those days it was a lot. And it was much bigger donation than anybody else. You know, there was Ashok Birla gave one lakh or something. You know, <laughs> you know Birla is a very big, rich family. You know, some, somebody else gave half a lakh. But the two sannyasis, they, they gave 27 lakh. How did they get the money? They took a group of brahmacharis with them and they went to Japan. And they went to Japan in the 1970s and they did Sankirtan. And they did Sankirtan and whatever money they collected from book distribution from Sankirtan, they gave it, they brought it to India, gave it to Prabhupada. So that Prabhupada could build that Krishna Balaram temple and then they went on and they built the Juhu temple also. So, you know, devotees, we, we do these things. We do these things, not because, not just f for our own pleasure, but we do it for Krishna, to please Krishna. We want to satisfy Krishna. You know, we don't particularly want to do these things, but we do it for Krishna, because it's for Krishna's service, to make a nice temple for Krishna and for Krishna's devotees. You know, because those devotees worked so hard in Japan, even Banu Swami was there. Banu Swami, he was a brahmachari at the time. He was on the party because he's from his Japanese body. So they said, we're going to Japan, you have to come also. <laughs> so he went in the party too and he was doing Sankirtan all day, the whole day. And they really worked hard, you know, not easy. Click donations in Japan, people are really passionate, you know, really busy, you know, you have to really be pushy. But they worked very hard and they brought the money and they gave it all to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada built Krishna Balaram temple. And you can see today so many people benefit from the temple. And Juhu also, beautiful temple. So. Devotees make these sacrifices just like this temple, you know. Devotees have to work hard, they had to work hard to get the funds, to get the money, to get the temple. But it's eternal benefit, permanent benefit for the devotees. So devotees, devotees will do whatever Krishna wants them to do. Krishna wants us, if Krishna wants us to go to hell, okay, if Krishna's put me into that situation, I, we accept that situation. Go on with service. Devotional service should be ahaitiki apratihata. Right? 
Sabai pum sam paro darmo, e to baktir ad hoc sege. Ahai te ki apretiata, yayatma suprasidati. The supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service unto the Supreme Lord. Such service should be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the Self. So, this is a definition of devotional service. The devotional service should be unmotivated and uninterrupted. We have to serve Krishna without any desire. We just simply want to do what Krishna wants us to do. Just like Arjuna on the battlefield at Kurukshetra, he's going to fight. Why, do, why is he going to fight? He's going to fight Drona and Bhishma, all the people who he respected, but he's going to fight them because Krishna wants him to do it. No other reason. There was no other reason for him to do it. Only Krishna wants it, therefore I have to do it. So a devotee thinks like that. A devotee surrenders to Krishna and they're ready to do whatever Krishna wants them to do. Krishna puts you, you into that situation. You kind of say, oh no, 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 I'm not going. <laughs> you know, that, that's not pure devotion. That's conditional service. So we have, to, we have to come to this platform of pure devotion. And pure devotion means unmotivated and uninterrupted. It should be like that. It should be done without any thought of our own self. And it should be constant. It should be without interruption. It shouldn't be sporadic. Oh, today I'm serving Krishna, tomorrow I'll be in Maya. But anyway, I'll come back after a few days and I'll serve Krishna again. Devotional service should be continuous, right? That, that is what we want. We, Prabhupada wants that. Rupa Goswami dis defined devotional service also like that. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam. Anu yena Krishna nu shilanam bhaktir utamam. Pure devotional service must be without desire for fruit of gain or philosophical speculation. Meaning you don't, you're not interested in liberation either. And it must be done simply for the pleasure of Krishna. And Krishna means also Krishna's different incarnations and expansions, different forms. Krishna, it can be Krishna, it can be Rama, it can be Lord Nishingadev. But we have to do service, we have to engage in activities for their pleasure. This is devotional service. And so we want to satisfy Krishna. And if we, if we can satisfy Krishna, then our life is successful. And how can we satisfy Krishna? Simply by engaging ourselves, by giving up our attachment to sense gratification, giving up our material desires, and showing compassion for all living entities. We care about people. We care. That's why we go on Sankirtan. We, have, we do Harinam Sankirtan. We're giving them the holy name. Hmm? People are driving past in their vans and they're sh they see us and they're shouting and waving. Right? They know the devotees. They know that they see us, they're becoming Krishna conscious. Whenever they see us, they're, oh, Hare Krishna, you know. They're saying the holy name. So that, that's what we want. We want to give people the holy name. We want people to become Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness is in everyone. It's our job to show that compassion to them. We may not be able to bring everyone to the temple. We may not be able to give them a big plate of prasadam every day. But 
at least if they just see us chanting the holy name, then their Krishna consciousness is aroused. And they think, oh, there's Hare Krishnas. You know, they're thinking of Krishna. So that is, that is our charity, that is our duty, to, that is our compassion on them, awakening them to Krishna consciousness. They're asleep, they're in maya. Right? We say, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chanda Boli. Wake up, sleeping So, And how to wake them up? Loudly. Prabhupada said, he uses the word loudly there. Loudly chant the holy name. Some, I was in Hong Kong and I went to see one man. In Hong Kong I was doing, approaching different business people quite a lot of Indians there. So I go to their offices to go to see them, you know. So I went to see this one man. So he was, he was with another spiritual group, you know. He, he said, oh you Hare Krishna people, you always make so much noise, you always make, so, you, you always create so much disturbance. <laughs> he said, why can't you just do things quietly? <laughs> But I told him, I said, if I do it quietly, nobody will hear us, nobody will know. I said, we have to give Krishna consciousness, we have to distribute it. So we have to wake people up. Anyway, you know, you can never please everyone. Our duty is not to please everyone. We simply try to please Krishna, please Guru and Krishna. And if Guru and Krishna are pleased, then our life is successful. We'll never be able to please all the mudhas, all the naradamas, all the maya aparita jnanas, and all the asuras. We'll never be able to please them. And we shouldn't try to please them. But if we try, if we can please Krishna, and if we can please the spiritual teacher, then our life is successful. So, how to please them? Simply by engaging in Krishna conscious activities. Loudly chanting the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went all over India, alone practically, and he was chanting the holy name. There was one devotee, he was in one city in America, and he wrote to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, there's nothing happening here, nobody's coming to the temple. Prabhupada said, doesn't matter, just stay there and chant Hare Krishna. He said, there's so many living entities in the woodwork. Just chant Hare Krishna, they'll all be benefiting. Another time, Hong Kong. You know, in the 1970s it was very tough to be in Hong Kong. Nobody wanted to be there. Nobody wanted to be, it's expensive and all Chinese, you know, not very, not a very uh, easy place to distribute Krishna consciousness. So there was one devotee staying there and he said, Prabhupada, ca can I come and join you? Can I come and be with you? He said, no, just stay there in Hong Kong, even you're on your own. He said, just stay there and chant Hare Krishna. I said, if you, if you can chant Hare Krishna, everyone in Hong Kong will be benefited by your chanting. But if you go away, then our activities there will be finished. I said, you have to, you have to stay there and, and pay. He said, Krishna will send somebody, people will come, just be patient. So like that, doesn't matter where you go. What was the one time Hari Kesh was told, Prabhupada was telling him, go to Russia. He said, oh Prabhupada, there's, there's no vegetables in the winter time, everybody has to eat meat. Then eat meat, Prabhupada said. Then eat meat, but go. <laughs> Prabhupada said that, right? He told them, you have to go, you have to do it, you have to go there, you have to live in these different places where there's no Krishna consciousness. We have to bring Krishna consciousness into the environment, make the people Krishna conscious. This is our program.
propaganda. <laughs> right? In, in Chinese culture, they have propaganda, they have a whole department for propaganda, you know, how to prop make propaganda for the communist regime. You know, everyone should appreciate the Communist Party. So we have our Hare Krishna propaganda, you know, how to spread Krishna everywhere. The propaganda. Distribute books, distribute prasadam, Harinam Sankirtan, festivals, outreach programs, so many different programs. Try to make some propaganda because with a little propaganda, people pick up on it. Yesterday we were on Harinam, we were down at the lake there and we were chanting and some lady saw us, immediately she came forward, gave donation. And where, where was she? She was from America. And she come there in Zurich. And, and, and when uh, uh, Eka Chakra Prabhu came and showed her a book and everything, and then she immediately, she gave him a hundred dollars. Like, and so people can be very generous sometimes if they want. Krishna is in everyone's heart. Krishna inspires people. So we have to continue with our Sankirtan movement without conditions, you know, we don't care. People may spit on us, whatever. Some, Prabhupada said, in the beginning they will laugh at us. And then later on, they will hate us. And then finally, they will join us. And so, it, it's, it's like that. We have to be tolerant, like a tree. We have to be patient. Prabhupada was so patient. He tried for so many years to spread Krishna consciousness. That was only after, it, almost at the end of his life, when he started to get some re reaction, some response. People came, started to help. Okay, any questions, any comments? Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very, very much for this um, very nice lecture. Um, it is obvious that we should um, be satisfied for Krishna, like the verse is said, um, saying, and we should strive to give more. And how can we not neglect ourselves to an unhealthy um, point and um, still really have this consciousness and want to give more and more all the time. Okay, how to be sure you're not neglecting yourself? Well, our actual self-interest is to be Krishna conscious. So if we're, if we're Krishna conscious, if we're thinking about service to Krishna, then that is very good, that's a healthy condition. And that is taking care of ourself. But if you spend, if we just spend all of our time taking care of the body, <laughs> yeah, of course we can do, we have to take some care of the body, we have to understand the body also belongs to Krishna. Krishna has given me this body to use in his service. So I have to take care of it to keep it in good condition for Krishna's service. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, you cannot be a yogi if you eat too much or if you eat too little, or if you sleep too much or you don't sleep enough. So you have to, you have to know there's some balance there. Don't be, ex don't be fanatical. Don't, don't, don't go to some extreme you know, think you can give up eating or you can give up sleeping. You know, it would be nice, but service is more important. You have to do your service. We have to be able to do service for Krishna. 
So we have to know what is our capability, how much do we need. You know, if our clothes are all ragged and holes, then it won't look very nice out on Sankirtan. So we have to go, we have to be presentable when we go out on Sankirtan to meet the public. The public want, they, they see us and we have to pre present ourselves in a nice manner. We, we don't want to be seen as some uh, extreme group, you know, we shouldn't appear too fanatical, but they, sh they should see us a as an acceptable part of the society. And just like, you know, Buddhist monks and Christian priests and so on, so they see oh, Hare Krishna. They see us also, that we are also part of the, part of the, the society, part of the culture. Uh, this country, Switzerland, is secular, that they, they, they accept all different religions. So there are many different faiths here in the country. Guru Garanga Prabhu is always telling about how in Geneva, they burned this one man at the stake, you know. <laughs> they used, you know, like Joan of Arc in France, you know. They burned her at the stake. <coughs> so there was one man, he was, what was it, he was a pro huh? He was a Protestant or something, and, and the, the Catholics, you know. They, the, the Protestant religion was beginning and coming out, breaking away from the Catholic Church. Because the Catholic Church were saying the Pope is the absolute, he's the supreme, you know, we have to just hear to him, listen to him, don't hear anybody else. So some people didn't want to accept the Pope and they came away and they made the Protestant Church. But then there was friction between Catholics and Protestants and, and some, they would fight with each other. And so this one man, he got burned at the stake, they burned him alive in Geneva. And so, you know, nowadays people are much more passive, you know, we're secular. The policy in the country is secularism, meaning you recognize everyone has a right to their own faith, whatever faith they choose. Like in USA, in the USA there's a freedom of religion. So similarly here in Switzerland, it's like that. It's a secular state that, you know, we're not against other religions. Everybody can practice the faith of they choose. So we want to fit in with that mood, you know, that it's an acceptable part of the culture. We don't want to be seen as extreme and fanatical. We're not. Well, of course, you could say we are fanatic, you know. <laughs> People think it's fanatic to go out and chant and dance every day. But Christians also do that. The Christians also go out in the street and sing. And uh, Sai Baba people, they're supposed to do that, you know. Sai Baba people, they're supposed to do it. They don't do it, but they're supposed to do it, you know. Uh, uh, so when we do it, many people, they feel, they can see uh, that, well, you know, we're doing something which they should be doing. They don't do it, but we do it. We go out there and sing. Of course, we don't go out as much as what we used to go out, you know. When I joined the movement, we used to go out every day. Every morning, every afternoon, we'd go out and chant and dance. In London, in the winter as well. And George Harrison saw us, you know, and he was he was in, he was impressed. He saw the the faith that the devotees are they're out there every day, and he respected it. And that's why he bought Bhaktivedanta Manor. Of course, he met Prabhupada also, and Prabhupada also impressed him. So yes, you have to take care of your body, you have to know 
what your body ne how much your body needs. Don't eat too much. And don't sleep too much. Sleep enough and eat enough. And you have to dress properly, dress in a respectable manner. You should appear neat and clean. And then people will naturally give give you respect. Mm -hmm. So you you have to know what what your body needs. Of course, what don't listen to your mind. The mind will always say, "Oh, don't chant anymore. We've chanted enough." You know. <laughs> The mind will say, oh, don't go to Mongol Arti, you went yesterday, you don't need to go again. No, don't. <laughs> the mind will always tell you, the mind will rebel. So you have to know when is the mind telling you to do things which are not really true. You have to know when to neglect the mind. That takes intelligence. Intelligence is seated next to the soul. So Krishna from the heart can direct you. But don't listen to the mind. You have to be able to distinguish between when Krishna is telling you something and when your mind is telling you something. <coughs> Krishna is telling you, get up. You've got to get up. You've got to go to Mongol Arti. Krishna is telling you, you have to chant. You haven't finished your rounds yet. The mind is saying, it's okay. The mind is saying, don't worry. Well, we'll do it another time. Yeah. So you have to be able to distinguish between the mind and the and Lord Krishna or the the super soul. So that can be difficult. Some people's minds are very <coughs> very dominating. Okay? You understand the problem? Problem is the mind. <laughs> what what we need. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Lord Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Who does the backdrops? Uh, we have one devotee, Bala Krishna Prabhu, is a disciple of Rini Sosa Prabhu. He's an artist. He's an artist. But he didn't do all of them. Many of them are quite old. But he did some of them. You like them? Yeah, they're okay. Yamuna is also a painter. Really? And now she's making a new one. She's in process. Wow. Oh. Damn. I did not speak in here, but huh? I did not pick on it, but um, I'm thinking of it. I'm thinking of it. Very organizing it. For Chavashtam. That's what it should be offered. Oh, okay. okay. What's your plan? What's the plan? What's it going to be? Um, yeah, I have a plan. You have not yet started to show me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could show you what my plan is. But uh, I think it should be mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm.
in touch with all different scientists mm -hmm. and they also could make scientific presentations in different schools and colleges. So the other scientific basis of Krishna consciousness. Um. It's a book, it's a very small book mm -hmm. by Jerry Kamala. Oh yeah, I but I, it was a long time ago and I didn't understand it properly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He's got several books. Oh. Um, I just mm -hmm. got two. Materialism is a killing civilization. Oh, yeah, yeah. 